If the herbs are for healing, when did it change from the herbs to a carcinogenic chemical? And why? I was arrested. Why was I arrested? Because of the same thing that probably Jesus was hung for, defending what is called righteousness. You could be right, but you could also be dead right. What you're seeing is every part of life is being man-made. And the reason why is because you can't patent nature. You can patent anything you make man-made. When you make it patent, now I can make money. Type 2 diabetes, hypertension, lipid problems, cardiovascular disease, cancer, dementia. The list of medical problems tied directly to the food we're being marketed. We are actually making ourselves sicker by eating the processed food that the food industry has told us is good for us. How has Cargill managed to stay on top of the agricultural food chain for over a century? Imagine a company that's been around so long it could have supplied snacks for the signing of the Treaty of Versailles. Yes, we're talking about Cargill, the undisputed titan of the agri-food world. So what's their secret sauce? Or should we say their secret grain? If you've ever found yourself wondering why all the fuss about Cargill, that's because Cargill isn't just a big deal. It's a behemoth, the Goliath of private companies in America. Its revenue isn't just large. It dwarfs the combined might of the third, fourth, and fifth largest companies. Yes, let that sink in. But wait, not only has Cargill passed the test of time, it's aced the taste test of our tummies too. How, you ask? By leading the charge in the agriculture and food sector with a vast network of subsidiaries and franchises that span the globe. Isn't that something to chew on? Trust me, the Cargill logo might not be on the food product, but be assured that it touches everything you eat at least once before it hits the stores. It's like a fairy godmother with its magic wand, but this particular one makes money off you. It controls what and how you eat every day, which means that you only get the quality and quantity of food that it makes available. I had asthma, I had diabetes, I was impotent, I wore glasses, and I weighed 291 pounds at age 30. The man looked at me and said that I was dying and that I had to change my weight. Then he asked me, do you believe in God? I said, of course I do. He said, well, we have to take it up a notch. You have to deliver yourself. But when you deliver yourself to God, you can only do those things and eat those things that God made. He said, young man, please, you have all these diseases. You need to stop eating. He took me away from meat. He took me away from all of the things that we think are good. They are not. How could I be sick at 30? With all these maladies, I made this change. The Mexican helped me. I found that out, that everything that we put in our mouth is laboratory made. And what does that mean? It means this. God made us. We were not made by a laboratory. If we were the product of a laboratory, then it means that we could eat laboratory food. As an engineer, I saw something, that all machines, they use the human body as the prototype. And what causes machine to go bad? Oil or obstruction, clogging. So what do I do? I do the same for you, like the Mexican did for me. We are about to reveal how the food they sneak onto your plate is haunting your health. No need to panic. Just brace yourself. Did you know Cargill Incorporation once ran an intelligence operation that could give the CIA a run for its money? Shocking, right? What do you think they were spying on, Cornfield? Well, brace yourself and maybe leave the lights on because the rise of Cargill Incorporation isn't your typical underdog success story. Imagine a century-long saga of cunning consolidation, relentless absorption, and strategic mergers. Since 1865, when William Cargill planted its roots in Iowa, this giant has been on a stealthy mission to dominate every crumb of the food economy from seed to table. Initially a humble grain storage operation, by the 1800s, Cargill expanded its tendrils into livestock and poultry, morphing into a behemoth that dictated agricultural trends. Fast forward to the 21st century and Cargill looms as a global colossus, its shadow stretching across every facet of the food industry. But here's the hair-raising part. While our taste buds perform a victory dance, are our bodies silently suffering the consequences? The unnerving truth lurks in the additives and chemicals sprinkled into our meals to boost taste, texture, and unnatural extended shelf life. For every 50 grams of processed meats that you eat, it increases your risk for cancer by 16%. And for every 50 grams of red meat you eat, it increases your risk for cancer by 12%.
So just think about that for a second. That's just when you eat that. Now add all of the other things that I talked about before, you know, a lack of fiber, you know, high fat is particularly animal fats, a lot of processed chemicals in those foods as well, sedentary lifestyle, etc. These are the things that compound on each other, but simply by eating those things, you can increase your risk by 16 to 12%, really important. Also age, age is also a risk factor too. We're now seeing people between the ages of 40 and 50. That's the highest category of people who are being diagnosed with colon cancer. Ever thought this tastes too good to be true? Maybe it is. Are our stomachs cheerfully deceived while our bodies wave red flags? What hidden horrors are we ingesting under the guise of flavor? It's wild to think about the processes our food goes through before it reaches our plates. From seeds to fertilizers to packaging, there is a whole chemical journey happening behind the scenes. And don't get me started on all the preservatives, antioxidants, thickeners, flavoring, and colorings thrown into the mix. It's like our food is going through a cocktail party before we even get to have a bite. Guess what? All that mixture keeps you addicted to those ultra-processed foods in the stores. Cargill ensures that these foods are everywhere, making our lives more convenient, but also potentially wreaking havoc on our health. It's no wonder that Dr. Eris Lathan called modern food weaponized in an interview. It's like the food we eat is fighting against us. To save, defend, and protect my life as a revolutionary human being because I know that modern food has been weaponized. You can order a new body today, and in seven years you could change every cell in the body and you could be younger than how you are today. You can cut your, your life's aging in half in seven years and live in a brand new body, so it's never too late to do it. But you need coaching. You need experience, advice how to get from being sick and tired of being sick to being the best version of who you could have ever been in your life. It's not too late to claim your life, take ownership and heal thyself. Be your own doctor. And this is the beginning, one bite at a time. The scary thing is that the continuous urbanization and modernization of societies have led to a disconnection from natural food sources, making it challenging to access wholesome, nutritious food in its purest form. I lost all of my grandparents, but I had a great grandmother who lived to 105. She walked into my grandmother's funeral who was 67. Well, she grew up on a farm, lived on a farm. She ate what she grew. All processed meat, which most meat is processed, because it has to be. You gotta think, if you slice something up, there's no way possible for it to last, the, the length of time that it lasts. I mean, if you run a dog over out there and come back two days later, it's gonna smell, look, and have things coming out of it. That's what flesh does. It goes into rigor mortis, and then all of a sudden it starts to break down. So how is it that meat can be in this grocery store? for weeks and days, because most of the meat you're eating, I mean, it literally takes, it's in there in the process for months. Remember the old saying, you are what you eat? Well, it's not about turning into a chocolate bar overnight, but rather recognizing that what you put into your body has a direct impact on your health and well-being. You know, the potential health risks of constantly eating these chemically processed foods are no joke. Cancer, diabetes, obesity, heart disease, and more. Did you know this? Studies have shown that these non-communicable diseases kill about 41 million people per annum, which is a massive 74% of worldwide deaths. Let's talk about how Cargill stores its grains and seeds. As a leading figure in the food industry, they are all about being a step further than other competitors, and they're not sleeping on keeping their food fresh. To keep those grains and seeds from going bad, they employ a mix of natural and chemical methods. That's the trick. It's like being in a dilemma of choosing the easy, fast method or the slow, stressful path. I mean, considering the very large quantity of grains and seeds, you should already guess the better option. But don't ponder too too much, let's leave that for the FDA to confirm. But just imagine that all those grains and seeds are preserved with chemicals like pesticides, and it's like that's a big, healthy disaster. Dr. Sebi wasn't pulling any punches when he said all our food comes from the laboratory. You see rice and beans and flour and cheese and meat and the starch that you eat, they all came from right here, from a laboratory. Now, for us to eat, you have to have the understanding of biochemistry. But when we were here, 
we didn't have to know anything about biochemistry. Why? Because God doesn't make poison. I mean, even our dynamic meats like bacon, hot dogs, and sausages, not to mention the famous boxed beef from Cargill, they're all in the ultra-processed category. Yes, you guessed right, these yummy meats are packed with chemicals like nitrates and sodium phosphate to keep them looking fresh, juicy, and shelf-stable. And yes, these chemicals are linked to serious health issues like cancer. Ever heard of trans fat? The villain of the food world. Your favorite snacks and pastries are often packed with it. So it is created when vegetable oils are chemically altered by adding hydrogen to extend their shelf life. Sadly, that hydrogen is a weapon fashioned against your body. These trans fats are very toxic to the body, they're toxic to the blood vessels, and they're toxic to the brain. Artificial sweeteners, sugar-free, yet full of sweetness. How? Here's the thing. The likes of Cargill use aspartame to produce what we know as artificial sugar. Packed with a trio of aspartic acid, amino acid, and methanol, aspartame promises zero calories. But guess what? It doesn't promise zero troubles. It's not just a toxin to the brain and nervous system, but can ultimately lead to the big C, cancer. According to Chris Beats Cancer, either sugar, fatty acid, or amino Amino acid can fuel cancer. With aspartame, it's like a recipe for disaster combo. You know the mouth-watering burgers, the yummy pizza, the deli treats, bread, pasta, and all those irresistible snacks that Cargill makes available to you? They are all made from white flour. Sadly, when these foods hit the system, they can stir up trouble. With all the processing and refining done on the white flour, it's no surprise that it causes insulin resistance. Over to Dr. Robbie Price. The unfortunate thing about white flour is that it's been process has been refined and so when it goes into the body in whatever form whether it's cookies cakes pies pastas etc when it goes into the body it raises the blood sugar which causes the insulin levels to raise mm. which is now triggering eventually insulin resistance mm. and insulin resistance is really the issue when it comes to not only things like high blood pressure and diabetes mm. and heart disease but it's also the issue when it comes to cancer as well too mm. the truth will shock you did you know there are over a thousand chemicals and additives allowed in food in the U.S.? I know, it's alarming. The idea is that they are supposed to be used in small amounts. But here's the thing. Are companies really being held accountable for following the guidelines and safety standards? But here's a glimmer of hope. California legislature recently proposed a bill to ban some pretty harmful food additives. Potassium bromate, bromated vegetable oil, propyl paraben, red dye, and titanium dioxide. If they are being banned, it's because they're having a serious impact on our health. CBS News has obtained a copy of proposed legislation in California that would make it the first U.S. state to ban five common chemicals, including potassium bromate, from all foods sold, distributed, or made there. Then there's a monosodium glutamate, MSG, a chemical additive found in most ultra-processed foods that's designed to excite your taste buds. Listen, after it's done exciting your taste buds, it starts exciting all the diseases in your body. It's like, hello, taste buds, but goodbye health. Let's talk about one that makes every food picture perfect, appealing, and irresistible. That's coloring. From cakes to beverages, juices, pastries, chocolates, cookies, and cereals, coloring is everywhere. But have you stopped to think about what these colors are made of? They're not sent from the skies, that's for sure. They're created from various chemical mixtures, and the amount used to achieve those vibrant colors comes with a host of health issues. According to a report in the Journal of Pediatrics, the use of food coloring in America has skyrocketed fivefold leading to worsened ADHD symptoms in kids. No, the adults are not spared from these potential health issues. So what's the deal? Are we supposed to trust that these companies are using these chemicals responsibly? I don't think so. I mean, they're in it for the money, not our health. So what can we do about it? Well, like D.R. Morse, N.D. said in an interview, first things first, we need to wake up and realize that what we put in our bodies matters. It is time to take responsibility for our own health and well-being. There's a change in your consciousness. 
a change in the individual's awareness. Guess when the best time is to take control of our health and what we eat? It's now. It's time to ditch processed foods and opt for whole, nutritious foods in their natural state that will actually nourish our bodies and fight against diseases. Ironically, the motto of Cargill Incorporation is helping the world thrive. Sounds pretty noble, right? But with all the potential harm found in these ultra-processed foods, is the world really thriving or on the brink of collapse?